while since I've done this, but uh, I guess it wasn't that long ago we did the 1M. But uh, full decon correction protection series on Bryce's uh, ND Miata, uh, which is a crazy color. What color is that thing? Red Soul Crystal. Okay, Red Red Soul Crystal. Or so red. it's a it's a multi-stage metallic, isn't it? I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically like a four-stage paint. So you'd have like your base and then red and like a clear on top of that and okay. primer so so new car prep uh so we have to you know the police had it for like a month now uh, so he's been driving around i told him to hold on until i got back from traveling so we could do the whole series and so first thing we're gonna do is decon it and yes a new car needs to be deconned uh, but this we're gonna take you through the whole process of of uh, from stripping it to to deconning it both chemically and mechanically and then uh, I'm going to take you through the step by step of the the whole you know the whole correction, uh, and then the protection phase. So we're going to do uh, we're going to do decon here first. Walk you through what what I'm using here. So uh, first thing we'll do is we'll wash it with uh, with my decon soap. Again, this is based on a formula. It's a tunnel wash type. Uh, what do you want to call it? A, it's an alkaline. I think it has a pH of 10 and change. Uh, but the, this soap, the, the magic of this stuff, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we, when we use it, it foams incredibly well. It's not super harsh on your hands, which I guess most bases aren't. Uh, and it, um, it, it just it does well in the bucket too. And then it has plenty of lubrication. So I know a lot of like paint correction specialists don't really give a crap about this part. But why figure why add scratches if we don't have to? A lot of my decons are followed by because I take really good care of my cars are followed by just like a just a one step finishing polish. So uh, I'll show you this this product and and it's something that disappeared from the market. I had no intention of creating my own soap. This isn't like one of those things like I I went to some blender and just kind of threw it together. This is an actual product that I that already existed, that's been around a long time, that needed to continue to exist, and I couldn't source it elsewhere. It's been a real big pain in the butt to try to get it made anyway. So I changed it to purple because I think purple looks cooler, has more to do with, with, uh, with Iron X. So Decon Soap, we're gonna use Microfiber Madness and Creta Pad, uh, my bucket package or bucket system, we're gonna use that. After we do that, what you should do is you should uh, you blow the car off. And speaking of which, we probably don't, I guess we'll have to use compressed air. I didn't bring my blower here. Uh, but we'll, um, we'll uh, chemically decontaminate it with some Iron X. You should blow it off and dry it off, but we're not gonna worry about it. It's a new car, so it shouldn't have a lot of fallout. Uh, but we'll do uh, Iron X using uh, press all bottles. Uh, and then we'll have some Tar X in case there's anything heavier that we need to remove, we probably won't. Uh, and then we'll follow with uh, auto scrub. So in my decon, I sell this whole package minus the press all bottles for now, uh, but uh, using a pad, you could put this on your machine. This is the uh, Nanoskin fine version and then fine sponges. Uh, and then I have some clay in case we need it. We'll probably use clay on the wheels. We're gonna do wheels off. Uh, Nanoskin glide diluted, what do I diluted? Seven to one for, for this step. And then we have various towels. So we have some big drying towels. We don't want to use any kind of drying aid when we're drying the car off prior to polishing. Uh, after we're done with all of this, we'll pull the car in and we'll take you through the next step of all this stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna go out, get, uh, get set up. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is go take you over to the pressure washer and show you that, show you what we're gonna use. We're doing the full wash, full decon here at HQ. Another thing I should mention, up above, I ran it all night and I'm running it now. Uh, jet filtration system, um, just kind of sucking the air. This will cycle the air five times an hour in this facility. Uh, and so this should pull out a lot of the dust and because we do a lot of boxing here. Uh, and so this should pull out a lot of the box dust and things like that, that are floating around. It will also run it, we'll probably run it the whole time when we're polishing. So it's pulling all that polish, you know, dust hopefully out of the air. Uh, so that way we can coat today if we're lucky we can get the first layer of uh, G-Tech and Crystal Serum Light on the car so it can cure overnight for XO tomorrow morning. All right, so uh, we're gonna be using this setup here, Jenny, uh, which again, most of this stuff I provide and save you the trouble of uh, having to deal with all of this, uh, trying to fit, put this all together so I can design these systems for you. 
Uh, Jenny, uh, this is the uh, W5B ADV, 80 gallon tank, uh, five horsepower, delivers about 28 CFM monster uh, compressor, uh, is feeding an air rev, uh, this is the air rev rev 20 uh, dryer. So this is cooling the air to uh, roughly 32 degrees. Uh, I purged all the lines. I drained the tank. I still have to set up my tank drain. This has a pneumatic automatic tank drain, but I need to run lines for that. But I, I, I drained it out, blew out the lines, so I have good, clean, dry, cooled air. It would have to deal with humidity here in Florida. I brought the AC down to 70 degrees in here, so we're gonna be super comfortable. It makes coating the car a lot easier. This feeds, excuse the mess here, but feeds a, a Prevost uh, Alto 3 filter regulator. Uh, through some uh, AN lines, I've got double filtration, uh, and then another filter on the bottom of the, of the Prevost uh, filter regulator, and then that feeds lines throughout. Uh, we have Cox hose reels, Cox power cord reels. I'll show you more of the products that we're using. I will also be using my new uh, Sesc Garage uh, Prolock uh, power cords for our polishers, uh, but this is the uh, compressed air system we're gonna be using uh, for, the, uh, for the garage. Hose reels are here, so in all four corners, I have power and air. So you can see our setup, the way I have it designed. All right, so we're gonna get set up for pressure washing. This is my custom install solution. Uh, we're gonna use regular tap water to start, uh, and then we'll rinse it with DI. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go tap. So uh, first thing I'll do is remove uh, my little OG plug that we have. I don't know if we have any in stock, but a little OG plug. You can see why to stop the PP dribble. We'll get our uh, gun set up. This is uh, my prototype wand, but not the prototype gun. The prototype gun I have back at my house. So this is a standard, or my standard Mosmatic swiveling gun to help make sure we stay, uh, keep the uh, hose reel from binding. Uh, and then this is the new tip that will be coming at some point in my lifetime. Uh, but new tip system. So I'll show you this out there. I'll reduce the drag a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll just pull this out the door uh, and fire up the, the, uh, the pressure washer system. So I have water off. I'm gonna water on. Turn the pressure washer on. As soon as it pressurizes, it turns off. That's the beauty of the 1322 other, over other options out there. I have a 4.0 nozzle. We're gonna get right around 1,000 PSI at around, right at just shy of two gallons a minute uh, for this, this setup. So I'm gonna pull out about probably 50, 60 feet of hose. This is a 100 foot uh, Cobra Jet hose, super pliable. Uh, one of the best pressure washer hoses, if not the best pressure washer hose in the world. It's the best that I've found on a very smooth Cox hose reel. I just realized I'm getting like super salesy on you here. That don't mean to, mean to be that way. I'm just fired up about all this stuff. This is the first time we're using the whole setup from start to finish in HQ. So let's go decon. Step one, decon. So don't get crazy on me here. We're, we, got, we, got, we got four steps to go through to get this car prepped and ready for polishing. So. Uh, my methodology here, this is just a process where uh, we are going to wash it with a soap that has an alkalinity to it, so it will remove some waxes and sealants and maybe put a dent in whatever film or, or extra layer you have on top of your coating, your sacrificial layers. It's going to remove you know, most of that. Uh, and then the next step would be to remove even more of it with some Iron X possibly. And then the next step is to remove even more of it with, the, with, a, with a clay or auto scrub. And then the final step would be an eraser wipe down prior to washing or an alcohol wipe down. So this, this four step process uh, should take care of all of that. So don't get too excited about the soap. This is just a good soap that does all the above well. It strips to some extent. It foams really well. It suds up really well. It doesn't completely destroy my hands. So to me, it's a win-win from all angles. So I'm putting uh, roughly 150 milliliters of soap, just to keep my funnel there, in the foam cannon. I'm gonna fill up the foam cannon, uh, you know, that's Miata. I probably only need to fill it up halfway. I'm gonna fill it up. 
three quarters. I'll, I'm going to dump the rest of the soap in my in my washing bucket here in a minute. The old hope I don't get my finger stuck in the bottle trick. Get it mixed up. Soap is relatively soluble. Ah, oh, crap. This is the 1.1. I got to go swap this. All right. Little diversion there. I had to put a 1.25 millimeter orifice in here. Get it ready to go. So first step, rinse the car. Gosh, I love this pressure washer. I like this concept that I stole from Dylan Von Kleist that Rupes to uh, wash from back front wash against the grain of the car. I mean, it probably doesn't do a whole heck of a lot more, but think about this logically as dirt, as you're flying down the road, dirt hits the car, embeds this way. So whatever little cracks or little uh, you know, divots or I guess microscopic, um, uh, you know, whatever you wanna call it, scratches and, and imperfections in the clear coat, I guess the imperfections, dirt will grab that way and then when I'm pressure washing, if I pressure wash this way, I guess theoretically we may walk, knock down another X percent of, of, uh, of junk off of the surface. I, again, I wouldn't overthink it, but just an interesting idea. Certainly can't hurt. Now this is my kind of car to detail. Not a lot of paint. Nice and small. So we're not going to mess with the wheels, we're going to take the wheels off. The only thing I'm going to do is knock out the brake, brake dust, but we're going to take the wheels off the car. This is one of those things where not having a dedicated wash bay means we got to beat the sun. Man, I'm slumming it without a boom pole, this is, uh, this is bad. This sucks. All right. Now we're ready to foam it. 1.25 millimeter orifice, foam cannon pegged. Okay. So here's the cool, the coolest part about this whole detail is that now that I'm like big boss man, I don't have to do the parts I don't want to. So I, that's the fun part. Now I'm gonna let Bryce and uh, Kyle do the hard part. So get the uh, bucket set up. So this is a bonehead move that I did when I built this place or, or put it together. I had a darn pre a hose bib put in, but I didn't think ahead and mount the darn thing 45 and a half inches high like I should. So, oh yeah, he's way more thorough than me. I'd never do that, but. So bad. I'm gonna add some soap. When I'm deconning, I always use way more soap than I need to. Can't hurt. All right, so here's the story behind this soap. I've told this before, but uh, shoot. 2014, I had just started journaling on uh, Renlist and sharing my process. And a guy, I think he since passed away, but a guy had done a lot of product, test, product testing with AutoGeek. He was just like, kind of like me. He was just a, like a, a DIY, uh, but a, you know, a prosumer type product tester. Uh, had made some suggestions to me, some products that I was missing out on. And one of them was Chemical Guy Citrus Red, it was called. Uh, which then they rebranded re as Citrus Wash, which then they discontinued, which then I brought back, which then they discontinued again, which now is the derivation of this. So one of the things I see often, and this is something I'm, um, I'm rebelling against personally, you know, everybody talks about, you know, why don't I just go out and, uh, and, and make my own crap, make my own stuff. You know, the, the probability of me making a product line that's better than what exists is zero. Uh, and, and so what ends up happening in this game of making products is, you know, guys, 
detailing guys, whether you're a professional or now you're, a, you know, whatever personality of some sort, you go out and you go to a blend, local blender and they say, look, we can make you the best products on the market. And then they just make a bunch of random products. And they, they you know, work with a blender to try to make soap a certain way. This isn't that case. This is basically citrus red. This is chemical guys telling me, look, get out of here. We're not making this crap anymore. We don't think this product has any more viability. It doesn't fit in our line. Uh, it's a little bit too pro. You know, it's a little bit too professional. You can mess up the paint with this soap because it is very alkaline. So they said, look, you can just, we're not gonna make this anymore for you. For a while I was buying 55 gallon drums from them and they just said, look, we're just not gonna do it. And so I had a blender who said, look, we know what that soap is. All this soap is, this is I think it's called Tunnel Wash 2. So it's a alkaline designed to be a, you know, a, a soap that you would use in a car wash situation where they just hit the car, let it sit, and then, and then use it as like one of the steps of the, uh, you know, of the uh, car washing process, detailing process in a tunnel car wash. Well... Luckily for me, the, you know, the blender was able to make this product. And then they said, well, what do you want to do? You want to you add a scent? I'm like, we don't freaking need a scent. It smells fine. Uh, and uh, they said, well, do you want to change the color? I'm like, eh, we probably should. It was called citrus wash. Well, I've said this many times. Citrus is an acid, right? Acidic. But this is basic. So... Why was it orange or red-ish, and why was it called citrus, right? There's nothing citrus about it. It didn't even smell like citrus. So I've retitled it as decontamination soap, decon wash, decon whatever you want to call it, simple. And I made it purple because Iron X turns purple. So that's the, that's the methodology behind it. So this is a product that's been around for 15 years, 18, maybe 20 years, uh, that left the market and now is back uh, because I brought it back and it needs to exist. So this isn't just something I just decided one day, well, I'm going to go make a soap. I think that, I mean, I want version 19. I want version 18. I want, this is why I like using products from Sonax and PNS and, even, you know, Adams or Griots or these companies that have had version one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that have considerable resources to create these products. So I don't have any intention of doing that unless I could create version one, two, three, four, five, six. Like uh, my friend uh, Phil, Auto Fanatic, um, is wheel cleaner. He's, he's on version four already. He spent hundreds of thousands of dollars creating that, that one product. It's very different than just going to a local blender and saying, hey, make me some soap. So anyway, that's the backstory behind it. So guys getting the car clean, using smart practices, right? Start top, work your way down. I don't think you need multiple sponges to wash any car, but that's just me, two bucket method. And uh, we get the thing clean and ready to go. One, we're using the Incredipad XL. We have a Incredimit with the uh, mitt part turned inside out. Car's ready to rinse. We're gonna switch to deionized water, rinse it, blow it off. So nothing special about rinsing other than we wanna get some of the soap off or most of the soap off because we don't want that alkaline soap sitting on the surface. It could leave spots or residue behind. I've seen it leave, uh, usually you're okay, but I've seen it leave like trails on black trim uh, if you don't get it off quick enough. If you got any kind of sun, like this trim here could leave some streaks that you'd have to polish off. But other than that, the soap's pretty, pretty, pretty safe being at as high of a pH as it is. So we will notice that whatever product he has on the surface uh, is beading a little bit less. It should strip off some, you know, sealants. Certainly sealant, definitely wax. Probably not all of the newer ceramic sprays and all that crap. That stuff's harder to get off. So the next step in deconning is Carpro Iron X. This is my new uh, Pressol bottle. I would be using one of the black or red ones. The problem is I sold them all and I don't have any. So another thing you could do here on this part of the process is um, we could blow the car off to get a dry surface and dry it 
so we don't have diluted chemical, but I find this to be plenty strong enough that we don't have to worry about that. I don't recommend, neither does Corey from CarPro, uh, using, you can use Iron Soap, Iron X Soap. You could use Trix, which is a combination of Tar X and Iron X, but all those are diluted in comparison to just using straight up Iron X. So I like to do it this process where I just do on a, on the on the wet car right after doing uh, right after doing the decon soap going right to iron x again we're not dealing with the wheels here because we're going to remove the wheels bring the wheels out one at a time fully decon them fully clean them and uh and then we're going to coat those as well calipers too so we'll clean up the calipers when we uh when we remove the wheels yeah so we can feel contamination on the surface that's another thing with you know a new car you are like, well, there's, it's new, so it doesn't need to be addressed. A lot of times new cars are more, at least my new car is going to be more heavily contaminated than my old car for me uh, because I'm going to care for the car in, in my possession. But so we, we have some contaminants, embedded contaminants, so we certainly need to clay the thing. But first, we're going to deal with our mechanical, or I'm saying chemical decontamination. This is Iron X. We're going to do the Billy method, just rub it in with your hand. <laughs> yeah, so that's one thing you could do. You could agitate, so. Because I didn't really, this came off, this came over through Jacksonville by port from Japan. Yeah, so it's going to have came on the back of, of a truck, and they dropped it off, and they left it there. Everything's still on it, so. So Kyle has gloves on, so he's going to walk around and just wipe this in. Because, again, we're misting on the surface. And so you could use a microfiber towel as well if you are really concerned, especially if you had a car that really didn't need to be polished and was just being decontaminated. Shoot, we should move the car over. For, we're gonna move the car over for claying. This is where the dual, I don't really like dual acting sprayers, but for this application, it works great. You could also do something like an IK foamer or IK sprayer. You don't really want to foam this. This product really won't foam anyway. So this step of wiping in the iron remover is probably not necessary, but certainly can't hurt. Yeah, see, this bottle isn't as comfortable as the uh, black and red ones that have and green ones that have the angled neck, but still, it, this one looks cooler anyway, I think. So because we have a little sun entering the equation here, we want to move. You know, on the, on the other side of the car, we have some sun. You want to be careful with this, that you don't end up with drying iron remover. I don't know what would happen, but I've never tried, so let's not, let's not go there. I think it'd be okay since we're going to polish anyway, but why? Why mess with that? So, you know, we want to let this dwell for four or five minutes. Usually by the time you get around the car, we're good. Use it on glass. Notice I didn't put it on the top. There'd be no reason to do that. You could use it on the wheels. You could use it on the calipers. Again, we're going to do those after the fact. So, should be good to go. And I want to rinse this really well. Yeah, we still have some beading. I guess that soap doesn't work. <laughs> like I told you, this whole process is going to remove whatever. It won't remove a coating, but this process will remove whatever we got on the surface here. And yes, iron remover smells really bad. Now, it wasn't even worth bringing the camera up to this because you wouldn't be able to see the purpling, but I don't really detect a lot of iron on the surface, but if you had a white car or something like that, you would certainly see it a lot easier. Okay, so we're gonna move this over, get it out of the sun, and then we're gonna uh, auto scrub it. I'm still using deionized water right now. So, Always start on the glass. I don't know what stage these are. These, uh, yeah, this, uh, this one's jacked. Oh, I see what the deal is. It's not messed up. It's just came out of place. There we go. So this is Nano Skin Auto Scrub Fine. I find no need for anything more aggressive. What's the what's the point? I mean, we're not doing anything crazy here, so I mean, I'm never dealing with cars that are gnarly, and even if they were, this should do the trick. So you always start on the glass. These need to be broken in the glass just to get the film off of it. 
Uh, I don't know, some of these are new, some of these are old. Uh, there's two different options uh, that I carry. Uh, I've had them all, the mitts, the towels, the, all the different versions. I like these the best. So Kyle has the hand version, which you could put on a machine uh, with the strap. And then Bryce has the little block. And this car is going to take about eight minutes to decon. So we would call this mechanical decontamination, or you know, Todd Cooper Rider would call it that. It's become known as that. I don't know if he stole it from somebody, but that's where I stole it from. Mechanical decon means that we're touching the surface. Of course, this is abrading the surface. So this is, hopefully this lubrication that we're using helps create a, a layer, so a layer of lubrication so that we're scratching less, but we're still gonna mar the surface. You need to get in it, Bryce. That's too, too weak. Too weak. Too weak. I know you love this car, but we need to get the we need to get the contaminants off. The purpose of this is to make sure that we don't end up with any contaminants that could be dislodged when polishing and get in our pad and then scour the surface and completely counteract what we're trying to do, which is correct the paint. Well, that's good news. I thought that sprayer was messed up. Uh, but what it was is the uh, the trigger had turned sideways. So I just straightened it out and we're good to go. This is the only way to learn about these bottles is to use them. But I, I still think, you know, these, this, this is very, these bottles, this design is very much like the Quasars where it's just not as comfortable. But I do find that they don't come undone as much as the Quasars. That's what I always hate about the Quasars. No matter how hard I torque them, the darn sprayer is always unscrewed on me. And, that, and the thing cut into my hand. The new 360 version of theirs isn't as bad, but I just think these are higher quality. So we're gonna keep working. I've gotta to try to get on a conference call with them this week to continue to work on improving the design, figure out why the black bottles are having the, uh, the tips. It seems like the gray tips are failing. I haven't had any of these tips fail, the white bottles. Yeah. But those are the same gray, black gray tip. Oh, true, yeah. yeah, these are blue. I don't know if that means that it's different. So the magic of a tiny little car like this is it makes your life a whole lot easier. This has been my dream. I, uh, I do the hood, everybody else finishes. I'm gonna do a Matt Mormon exposed video. He doesn't even detail whole cars and he calls himself a detailer. Expose yourself. Uh, my crude math in this is if a clay bar gets us to 98%, I think a nano skin auto scrub gets us to 92. So it saves a lot of time and energy, I think. Plus we can reuse these. If you drop one, just dunk it in your bucket. I just like this process better than I like. So we're gonna rinse it with DI water and then we're gonna blow it off, but we don't wanna use a drying aid. So that's why I'm gonna use some bigger waffle weave towels. We don't wanna add anything to the surface if we can help it. I mean, why would we want to create a barrier that when we're polishing that we create residue and it gums up? So we want, to we want to just get the water off, get it dry. A lot of times what I do or what I prefer to do is do this process the night before, but we were working on my uh, M3 and, and uh, 1M yesterday. So, but a lot of times I like to do the decon process the night before so we can get the car blown off and then sitting overnight drying, uh, that way all like the little cracks and stuff, because we're gonna notice when we're polishing, you're gonna vibrate out some water out of the crack. So we're gonna blow this off with the Ego Blower. We're gonna dry it, we're gonna bring it in, we're gonna blow it out, all the cracks and crevices as much as we can uh, prior to taping uh, for, uh, um, before polishing. So we'll do it with the, with the air compressor as well. An air compressor moves, doesn't move nearly as much volume of air as a leaf blower or a master, bla master blaster or something like that. Uh, but it is more spot capable. Uh, so we'll use that to clean out the engine bay and things like that. Oh, you know what? We probably need to clean the engine, don't we? It wasn't that bad, but... Shoot, we should have done that first. All right, engine bay. We should have done this first. I wasn't thinking ahead. It looks pretty good. Dude, I don't even think we need to clean this. 
Yeah. I mean, I lift it up, it's like there's some dust in there. That's about it. You can pick a towel and. Yeah, let's not even mess it. with this. But what I would do if we were going to clean the engine, I mixed up some, uh, which will be in the store here soon, Meguiar's D101, uh, diluted four to one, uh, which is an all purpose cleaner. And then we would spray hyper dressing. This doesn't even need to be dressed, but probably in six months, Bryce will want to, eight months, he'll want to, you know, wash it off. This is all watertight, so you could you could hit this with a pressure washer, and then hit it with some hyper dressing. Just spray it uh, like four, uh, three and a half to one. Spray it on, close it up, walk away. So we don't need to do anything with that. I think we leave it alone. Even the jams look good. We'll be able to wipe that off when drying. So it's we're gonna all sealed all the way around. So yeah. So we're gonna blow it off and then dry it. Blow it off here. I like this uh, observation roll. I'm gonna do a lot of this this week uh, on this car. So we're gonna, we're gonna blow it off with a leaf blower, turbo mode, and uh, yeah, dry it with towels. Come on. All right, so uh, finishing up here, drying out, you get all the jams, all the areas of the car, exteriors dried off, you know, as gently as possible, again, with no drying aid. Uh, and now we're gonna go and uh, pull the car in and get it prepped for, uh, for polishing. So first thing we'll do, well, well, I guess I'll show you what we'll do, but, uh, but that's the decon process. So we'll wrap up this video here and kind of subsection this out. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, catch you on the next one uh, with uh, taping and polishing. Thank mm -hmm. you.